hey, this is John from Distressed Mullet, and I'm going to try something new because I am tired of writing. I can't spell. It's my hidden shame, and uh, editing drives me nuts. So, without making everyone crazy with all of my grammatical and spelling errors, I'm just going to go ahead and do these on videos every week. So, there you go. Here is a new version of the Catch Chum, whatever you want to call it. Um, first of all, Cape to Cape. Uh, two weeks ago, drove up to Cape May, New Jersey and did the Cape to Cape Challenge for the DeSatnik Foundation. Raised money for spinal injuries. Uh, my friends uh, Chad DeSatnik and his brother Todd uh, were extremely uh, gracious hosts. The race itself is just awesome. They have like 35 spots. You have to qualify to get in there because there's a 16-mile crossing of the Delaware Bay. You go from Lewes, Delaware to Cape May. And it all starts the morning before where you get on the ferry. You uh, take the ferry over with all the people that are going to be paddling. You get to know each other. Everyone's putting on uh, sunblock and hydrating and stretching out. And they're making announcements. And by the end of the uh, trip over there, you kind of know everybody that's going to be on the water with you. And it's, it's, it's really cool. Your boats are all in the trailer. This was the first year they allowed... Um, outrigger OC1s and surf skis. Um, surf ski, uh, they just destroyed the course. We had great conditions and uh, very low humidity. A um, little light breeze kept it cool. The uh, course record was just destroyed. Uh, the 156 by the um, uh, by the winner on a um, V14, Epic V14, is just insane for the 16 miles. Uh, a lot of people had to, it's a very technical race. There are a lot of eddies and currents and the outgoing tide pushed people way out. They had to come back in to get to the finish line, but extremely challenging. There's a four and a half hour limit. Um, if you have completed the race within the time limit, you can uh, get a spot for next year. I'm not sure how many the permit is going to be allowing for, for next year, but um, I think they might open up a little bit. I highly recommend that you consider... Uh, the Dean Rodazzo Paddle for Cause or the Carolina Cup Graveyard, um, maybe a couple other long distance ones that show you can do the distance within the time to be able to qualify for this. And I would contact them early. I think next year is going to be phenomenal. And the after party spread was just great. And the coolest thing is the DeSatnik Foundation, um, Chad handed everyone a card and said, if you have anybody that's had a spinal injury, hand them this card. That's what we're here for. We are a 401c. We are legitimate. And, um, uh, we help people build ramps, get to therapy. Um, you know, Chad had a, a horrible accident, uh, breaking his neck and back um, 16 years ago. He just stood there with his family and his his uh, little girl, his one-year-old little girl and wife, and just you know, um, really proof that there's hope and and foundations like this that really help people. I got home and found out a good friend of mine. Uh, um, had a very bad spinal injury in a surfing accident uh, in the shore break in Nicaragua. And um, uh, so less than a week after I get home, um, somebody who uh, I know well is uh, needs their help. So pass the card on. I hope I don't ever have to use the second card that I got. Um, second, um, some upcoming races that I think are really, really um, just, just phenomenal races. I think you're going to really like them if you can be a part of the c paddle nyc it's a month away you have time to sign up you have time to raise the thousand dollars you just do your best um you'd be surprised if you send an email out to 100 people asking for 10 bucks uh you will get enough do donations most likely um you know shake the trees and uh and find a way to get there it is uh 26 miles around manhattan they use the currents in the hudson the and the harlem and the east river um this is uh, really one of those bucket list races that you have to do once in your life, if not every single year. Going under the George Washington Bridge, going under the Brooklyn Bridge, Statue of Liberty, Empire State Building, Chrysler Building, the Intrepid, the Boathouse. Uh, there's like a lighthouse under the Washington, uh, the George Washington Bridge. It's just, you can't even believe it's, it's real. And um, it is a, an incredible challenge, but it is well worth it. And again, that is... Uh, August 5th, and um, that is the Sea Paddle NYC run by Surfers Environmental Alliance, and they raise money for autism charities and uh, clean water, clean air, environmental through uh, Surfers Environmental Alliance. Uh, next race is the week after. 
Um, we're heading to Owabi, which is once around Bell Island in Detroit. Uh, Larry Kane is going to do a Paddle Monster Clinic, and um, it's going to be a really cool Midwest gathering. I think this is one of the races that uh, really takes advantage of being part of a city, um, has wonderful water. It's at eight, eight miles around this island. They also have another one, but they also have music and food trucks, and it's a real festival that people just show up and... Um, and then they see there's a race going on and the racers show up and they're like, look at all the rest of the stuff that's going on. Detroit itself has uh, risen from the ashes and um, they're really on a roll. The, the restaurants are amazing. It's inexpensive. Um, I think there are something like 1,500 organic gardens within the city limits. Or I'm probably butchering that stat, but the, it's just a great place to go. And I can't wait to get there. I'm going to um, uh, take my family with me on that one too. Uh, and um, I'm looking forward to taking the clinics with um, Tenille Hatton um, is most likely going to be there teaching a clinic and she's a six-time world champion and battle monster coach and I really want to get in the water and learn from her on, on a surf ski. Um, next is uh, safety. I got to tell you this last week, last two weeks have to be the deadliest one or two weeks that we've had in our community. We've had um, uh, five, six, seven deaths in 10 days. Uh, we had the, the three in Colorado in one day alone. Uh, two were in kayaks. Uh, one was on a stand-up. And um, I just really want to stress, so we have a number of articles on there. Um, we have um, uh, an article we put up yesterday that Lisa Shell, our editor, wrote um, that says, know uh, how to swim and wear your gear. Um, it's a, it's, you know, I think that our sport is unique in that our equipment is both high tech and, and can be very difficult and very demanding. It takes a lot of skill to use. And it also goes to the other side of the spectrum where it's like pool toy. So when you have people expecting a pool toy and then they go out into these technical areas that have currents and winds and, and require a certain amount of skill, um, they're actually probably pretty shocked when things go wrong. Um, I know that people don't expect to get injured or die when they get out on a paddleboard because it just looks like fun. And unfortunately, I know some people would love to blame the, um, the stand-up media um, for showing people in bikinis and not wearing leashes, but it's really not any of the magazines or any of the sites. We're talking about new people, and new people see things on commercials. They see things um, uh on their in people magazine on reddit and other and basically what they're they're doing is they're seeing celebrities um they're seeing stock photography that's used in clothing companies these are all taken by photographers that just want a beautiful shot they don't paddle the um uh they're also buying these uh like in costco they're buying these boards and with no nobody there to tell them hey by the way you need this or you need this or watch out for this so they're, they're buying them in a vacuum. They're seeing these celebrities and other photos where they're just out having fun. Um, they're buying them right next to those giant, like, inflatable swans. So um, just by proximity, um, it's implying these things are just easy pool toys. So I expect we will have a lot more. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's, that's actually not a, a, a really, um, I guess, a stretch for a prediction, but people are going to die. Um, and we know that there's a certain amount of things that happen. There's a, there's a price for freedom, uh, the freedom to, um, to go paddle, you know, the price is some people are going to drown. And, um, the, the trick is to, um, or not the trick, but the, the goal is to minimize that as much as possible. So, a um, couple of suggestions as paddlers, as examples, as people out there. Wear the appropriate leash. Um, I really like the uh, the waist, um, the board works re-leash. Uh, it's got a quick release. I use that on my outrigger and my uh, surf ski, and I use it uh, with a coil leash on my um, on my stand up. And it's great because it's right at your waist. If any of you have been in the current, to be able to reach your ankle, it's not going to happen. There have been people that have surf leashes on rivers and they get um, stuck around trees or whatnot, and they just can't physically do the have the energy to be able to pull the leash off. Um, so a quick release at your waist. Um, I, th I liken it to being at a gun uh, in a gunfight. Um, if you were in an old western and you went to draw your gun, uh, but you had to reach down to your ankle to get it and then shoot, it, you'd be toast. 
Um, so uh, I like to have your leash on, leash on your waist. Um, uh, also PFDs, um, people who can't swim or are not very good swimmers should be wearing vest PFDs. It's just, they should be. Uh, you, you can't think that a board is going to save you if you can't swim. So um, don't make it seem like they are um, second class citizens by having to wear these, you know, um, just have it as part of the standard equipment. Um, I, I, I absolutely hope if, if you do one thing after watching this, if each of you could go to the rental places that are around you and just ask them to provide leashes and make the people wear them, uh, where it's appropriate, uh, ask them to not just stick the PFDs underneath the netting, but ask the people to wear them. Um, you know, a crazy idea is to have them swim to the board uh, to be able to paddle it. If they can't swim to the board, it's probably a good indication that if they fall off, they're not going to be able to swim to land. That's a little extreme, and I wouldn't want to discourage anybody who's not a strong swimmer from doing this, but I would absolutely want to discourage anybody who's not a strong swimmer from doing this without the right safety equipment, because that's just stupid. Um, and finally, on the safety side, uh, those of you way up in the Northern Hemisphere, your water's still freezing cold. So when they're going out on these lakes and rivers in Minnesota and Canada and they fall, uh, cold water shock is, is a real thing. And it knocks the wind out of you. It happens in um, you know, Lake Tahoe. It's just, it's, it's rough. And, and pretty soon we're going to start seeing with all these summer winds, we're going to see people separated from their boards without their leashes and the chop and not being able to stay above water. So probably have another couple of, um, you know, an accents like that. Now, I do not want regulation. I do not want laws. I think we are a close community and we need to take personal responsibility. But that also means um, helping out the people around us and not being afraid to say something, uh, but being constructive. Don't make people feel stupid. Just say, hey, you know, there are very strong currents here and very strong winds. You may want to go in this direction. You may want to avoid it over here. You may want to use a leash. Can I lend you a leash? Uh, Lisa Shell is an instructor and um, at REI, and she um, will lend out leashes as she sees people on the lake. Uh, it's, it's worth it. And um, I think in the end, even if it's a little uncomfortable, so what? Um, there are a lot of things that are uncomfortable that are worth doing. Um, and now, last, I want to show you some gear. There's two things I want to show you. First is something I'm finding I'm using every single day with that I paddle. Um, and it's a key vault. Okay, so uh, Kenner Lock uh, makes them. And um, it's pretty cool because I put this on my, uh, my trailer hitch and, um, and no, I don't have truck balls on my trailer. Um, and I, uh, this goes around, it cl clicks into there. So now it's on. Put your key in there, lock it up, and it works. I'm pretty sure on the video you just saw what my code is, so I will change that. Anyway, um, I really like this. It's been great, and I have uh, driven around town with it hanging off the back of my car, and it didn't fall off. Um, uh, I have, there's a couple of things, the plastic, um, you know, has cracked, but it didn't come off. Um, it's been pretty solid. I've been using it since January regularly, and so far, so good. I, I actually really recommend this instead of putting your, your key on your tire. Second, for all of you um, outrigger people, um, a lot of you have those V racks. So um, this is a AMA rack that will attach to that V rack. And um, there are two of them, one for the front, one for the back. They got little bungee cords that go over. So far, I've been really, um, I really like it. Uh, not good for particularly long rides. And if you don't have the arm in it, it makes a lot of noise with this. But in general, it sits in this. Um, it's, um, you know, a hundred bucks. Uh, they're custom made, a hundred to 200 right around there. And um, it's made it pretty easy because my, um, uh, from front to back seat, it, it can get in the way, and I've knocked over my my coffee, and and um, nobody wants to knock over their coffee. So really like it. Um, I'll put a link to this, and um, um, and other than that, um, sign up for the Sea Paddle in a month, a Wabi, and five weeks. I'll do one of these each week, hopefully, 
and um, and stay safe. Uh, it's a really good summer so far. And um, thanks, Quickblade, for um, unintentionally sponsoring this first one. And uh, well, we'll see you next week. <laughs>